This episode, author Wendy Sachs stops by. Yeah. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 269 of the Ask Gary V Show. And I'm super excited to uh, introduce you guys to Wendy Sachs, who clearly has a new book. I see that. I like like, the the hustle here on the table. I'm very (laughs) impressed with. In prime location. Wendy, why don't you tell the Vayner Nation uh, who you are and what you do? Wendy and I crossed paths a couple years ago. I was super impressed. We've kind of stayed lightweight in touch, mainly lightweight because I think I'm, I was stalking you. You weren't stalking, but I was. <laughs> but I, but uh, your vibes are super interesting to me, and I'm excited for the Vayner Nation to get to know you and tell me about uh, this book. And then we're going to go back to the beginning of your career. All right, fantastic. Um, Fearless and free: How smart women pivot and relaunch their careers. It was inspired by personal experience. Um, I had lost my job. And I started panicking. And I actually met you around this time before, which sort of inspired the book, because I had always worked in media. Um, I'd worked in television. I had worked in editor- on the editorial side. Um, I'd even actually started my career on Capitol Hill as a press secretary a million years ago. And everything that I had done, the, all of my industries had completely disrupted because of digital, right? I mean, it, everything has changed in the past five years, certainly 10 years, you know more than anyone else about that, and I'm a little bit older than you are. So I You look saw, way younger. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, but I really, I saw my friends losing their jobs. I saw that I couldn't even get a job at a VaynerMedia or at these new bright and shiny startups in the social media world because I wasn't able to tell my story properly. I had done all of these really interesting things like Capitol Hill Press Secretary, Emmy Award winning TV news producer. Um, I was the editor in chief of Care.com. I had done all of these things. I was even the on-air spokesperson for TripAdvisor for a while, which is sort of random. Um, But when I was sitting down with people, I wasn't connecting the dots for them. So to stay relevant, to stay employable, I needed to figure it out. How was I going to sort of change my narrative, sell myself, sell my story? And I turned to Silicon Valley because I feel like they're the North Star. They are directing everything today. And I looked at those successful themes coming out of Silicon Valley, like engineering serendipity, embracing failure, the power of networking, and how can women apply that to their careers, which is sort of different than the way that men do. Super interesting. I want everybody to rewind 45 seconds back. There's a part, as you were going through that story, where you said, I wasn't able to connect the dots for those people to get that job. And it is super fun for me when I do this, where I hear the thing that is the biggest, um, most glaring, obvious reason somebody is a winner Mm -hmm. and or someone is a losing player. I don't want to use loser, everybody gets so sad. A losing player. (laughs) A little depressing, yeah. The amount of people, when they talk about transition or jobs or things of that nature, that default into blaming the person you know, they didn't get it. They were mm, stupid. Right, right, they were underestimating right. yep, me. Yep. They thought I was a woman. They thought I didn't have digital experience. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they. Right. Um, but you went with accountability. Yeah. I wasn't able to get them to. Right. I right. just think it's super interesting. I really do. And yeah, I, it's, thank it's, you. it's the theme, it's the something that I don't think enough people are talking about. Like, right, and, and that's I just, interesting. I just liked, yeah, I knew uh-huh. that I had a funny uh-huh. feeling that you, like, you just were just telling your story. Yeah. It's a big, fucking deal. Right. It's right. really a big deal. Like once you default into I, mm-hmm. well you didn't sit and dwell mm-hmm. for the next 5 or 6 months or years. Right. You just went out and did something about it and right. that's the fundamental difference. I think the people that think it's them mm-hmm. sit and dwell and complain mm-hmm. and never actually do the next thing and adjust and when you go I didn't or right. I wasn't able to. Yeah. That speaks to why you're sitting here right now in my opinion. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I think that it is true. We have to connect the dots. And I, all of a sudden I started embracing the idea of like, well, really the through line to my career is I'm a storyteller. 
You know, we just didn't call it storytelling back in the day. That's right. right. So I needed to change the vernacular. Like all of these things that I had done were all the things that people were hiring for. I just didn't use the language. So I went into LinkedIn. I literally started scrubbing my profile. I started marrying my language to what the people who had the jobs I wanted just sort of saying what how they presented themselves. I was hacking it a little bit. You yes. know, I wasn't lying. You were I brand just, positioning. I was, yes, I was doing my own rebrand when, position. At VaynerMedia, yes. sometimes one adjective change in a deck yeah. has created the variable of us selling. Right, sure. I mean, this is why everybody, let me give everybody a quick tidbit. All of you that focus an hour and a half on the goddamn photo on Instagram yeah. and then write anything because you think it's the whole photo, mm-hmm. don't realize that the thing you're trying to accomplish, so much of it has to do with the two sentences that right. you write on the picture. Sure. In a medium like Instagram that's so visual, yeah. like you were hacking it because one word was the difference Absolutely. between people hitting you up and passing on to Absolutely. the next profile. I'll tell you what that word is. That word is marketing. I had never considered myself a marketer, but now it's all content marketing. Sure. I would say I'm a writer. Sure. But now, actually, well, I say content marketing. That it's makes the sense. Same thing. And <laughs> I, I for, for a lot of people that watch me, yeah. I always say act like a media company if you want to be a good That's marketer, yes. right? So it's going the other yes. direction. Yes. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So in all of the things that I was really talking about and speaking about and when I go and now speak to groups, so much of it is actually very similar to, and this is I think why I was stalking you for such a long time because I'm so intrigued by what you built here and what you say to other people and how you inspire people. But I was just doing it with a more female approach. I understand. Yeah. I mean, it's very Are you calling right? my approach non-feminine? I think your approach is just very alpha male. Yes. I mean, you are very alpha, right? Yes. You get up there and yes. you rock and the fight. house. You rock the house. You're dropping F-bombs. You're cursing. Yep. yep. If I were to do that, yep. right, the perception would be entirely different. Well, you know what's interesting? A lot of dudes do that as well and the perception is very different and it doesn't play because it's just not authentic. Right, right. right? Like right. if you were cursing at home all day long yeah. and then- This and like, guy would not like it so much. Right, so like if that, yeah. like to me the big thing and, and listen, I do I think men and women have are accepted differently? 1,000%. Right. But what has been absolutely fascinating to me mm-hmm. is that a lot of guys don't get away with my stuff either because right. they're forcing it. Sure. In the same sure. way that to be very frank with you, mm-hmm. I don't know if I would hit by the way, it was super uncomfortable for me in 2007, 8, 9 to be me. Mm-hmm. 2017's a very different world than it 2008. It is, isn't it? It was hard to be me too. Uh, you know what I mean? So like, <laughs> yes, you know, it's yes. funny. Everybody thinks yeah. like I have it so easy as Alpha right. Man. Like you go look at my early comments on my early content. Uh-huh. I'm crass. I'm unacceptable. Mm-hmm. I'm non-consumable. I'm disrespectful. I'm right. a bad guy. Right. So, you yeah. know, maybe the world's become a little more reverent and like, you know, has changed that has allowed it to seem like it was, but like my first three or four years putting myself mm-hmm. out there, mm-hmm. and when I wrote Crush yeah. in 2009, yeah. you know, charlatan, narcissistic, who's gonna do this, right. personal brands, right. yeah. like everything. That, no one could really understand Right, it. I mean, this is the right. framework of so sure. many people's success now, so right. I mean, I get it. Yeah, no, it's all about owning it. But I do think that there is a fundamental gender difference. I mean, there's no, th- there's no doubt. The, the people that debate yeah. there isn't make me laugh so much. Right. Guys, girls and boys are different. They're different. The way they're consumed is different. It's real life. Well, so what struck me, you're actually not in my book, but yes. you were in my book proposal in the yes. first draft because- it, They cut me out? When I, no, no. The book, you cut me became, out. I Jesus. did not cut you out. Okay. It became all about women. I didn't Respect. really have any dudes in there. But when I had met you and sat down across from you, not at this gorgeous office space, but back in your old office, um, and you said to me, it was, first of all, by the way, it was one of the most entertaining interviews I've ever had. In fact, I think the most entertaining interview I've ever been on. It was, it was mind-blowing. And you had your feet back up on the, on, the, on the table, your hands back. Very, like, owning it, powerful male. There are pictures that I actually, I talk about in my book about this with UC President Obama, right? Totally owning his power, same type of position, right? Women just don't do that. So if I were in a meeting and I were to, or even sitting here and put my feet up. Let's it try be, it. It would be wild. Let's right? see it. People would. Show me. People would. All right. Here we go. Let's see. Write in, write in your comments Here we on go. this, right? Yes. Right? Do, doing all of this? Yes. Doing I love it. You like I, think it? You're, I think you're killing it. Go ahead. <laughs> I love it. But you, so what you am said I doing me, right now? You said, right. You're, you're, just, <laughs> this you're just, just chilling. But you said to me, I was you like, remind me. You said, you remind me of me. You're all hustle. I remember it. And I was just like, I still feel that. I'm like the female. Maybe I'm like the. 
but the softer female because we can't really do that. We can't express in the same way. I told listen, yeah, by the I'm way, I'm fascinated by that. And I'm fascinated by it because I also think that you have mm-hmm. tendencies that a lot of people would call male. Right? Yeah, like you you probably. know and I feel like I like the people that like the more you know me, the more I go towards cliche female tendencies. Um around EQ and you know warm right. and like it doesn't come across in my public persona right. as much as it does in my operating persona. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's super interesting. What, what's the book about? So like the book really is, about so, like for the yeah. for the men. By yes. the way, I assume that men could yes, men, can men and read should this, right. And they should and the, the guys Jake, who have read Jake, this. Jake, are you committed to this, reading this? They Jake, love this book. Now I am. You Good should Jake. be. They, Thank it, you. Is, it is really gender neutral, Understood. although I do speak to the ladies a little, slightly right. more. But what I talk a lot about is taking risks and building confidence because the foundation that I found for all change, you know, my line is I pivoted so much in my career, I'm like pirouetting. I mean, I've switched it up so many times. Not always because I've wanted to. I've lost my job a couple of times. I heard you. And, you know, I had to take risks, right? But I've also failed so many times. I mean, I would not be sitting here with you if I hadn't failed as many times as I have. I mean, I truly have. Do you look back at the, you know, look, taking risks... I don't think happen when you get fired. I think you were forced sure. into risk. Sure. Taking risks is sure. taking it. Yes. On you, right? Yes. Do you now look back at the firing, the last one that kind of became the catalyst as an unbelievable blessing? Um, yes and no. I Tell mean, me I don't the wanna, no part. The no, like, yes part's easy because right. you're on your way, you're doing your thing, sure. right? Sure. What's the no part? It hurts. I mean, it does feel very personal. It's rejection. It's rejection. It's a little humiliating. Yeah. You know, how you're going to message but it. But do you, do you, it's funny. This is an interesting insight. Wouldn't you have to respect the thing that you're rejecting for it to hurt? Perhaps. So, so the, perhaps, thing, the yeah. thing I think that's really always worked uh-huh. for me, like the people that like get mad at me every mm-hmm. day, and I read every comment on every platform, they razz me or they undermine me or mm-hmm. they disrespect me, mm-hmm. but I don't respect them for it, which never lets me get hurt because right. I know it's coming from a selfish place. An organization right. that fires you, especially during layoff times or things mm-hmm. of that nature, they're just making a financial, unemotional, like big right. companies can't get deep enough to really know what you're about. They literally sure. need to take the opinion of one person. Sure, like, that's true. Like that's exactly great. what happens. Right, yes, right. right. So like, good, <laughs> right. perfect. So totally. that's great. I'm glad I didn't know this, but like, here we yes. go. Yes, like, here we go. Let's how could you about. respect yeah. any organization uh-huh. that took one boss's mm-hmm. of yours opinion mm-hmm. as gospel you know, I'm crippled by firing people here. I'm, we do like CIA, TSA, <laughs> FBI. I'm not taking Andy Kay's opinion on Kendall. Right. I'm not. Right. I, it's a opinion. It's it's a powerful opinion. Mm-hmm. But Andy's looking at a lot of things on my team. Mm-hmm. Like and and he's not factoring in every variable, and right. he can't. And like so, you know, to me, I'm curious, especially now on your reaction. Sure. Because it's an interesting insight. Uh-huh. I want, and what I'm doing is this mainly for the audience yeah, is got you've got to really respect and really admire the opinion of the thing that rejects you mm-hmm. to allow it to feel like rejection. I think that's a really interesting take on it. I mean, I think right? the other, yeah, and the other piece though is that what my experience is when I've failed or call it failure, certainly had a big disappointment. Um, you know that there's sort of almost nowhere else to go, right? So you start leaning into yourself. Like, you know, you've now, right? You've now, like, sort of hit that. bottom. Do you talk a lot about that in the book? Um, I do. Because I, do. Because because I, only, I default into that place. Yeah. Well, I do too. I just I default into me being with me. Yes, I do too. Which is why. Without a childhood. childhood. What's that? Probably from, like, a childhood. Yeah, of course. Experience. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, like, it's funny. Like, I never am upset because I'm just within it myself. Right. I only default into. I'm on the too. I think that's a healthy place to be, right? I mean, I'm like, I don't, so I trust myself and I think I like were you myself more, enough. Were you, were you more, let me ask you another question because yeah. I'm fascinated by this actually. Yeah. Was it less about feeling rejection because you're like, fuck it, this boss was a dick, I know how it happened. Right. Was it more about like going to the cafe on Saturday and being like, fuck, I gotta talk about this with my homies? 
Because no, I'm fascinated yeah, by that. Yeah, no, I because, think for me it's more personal. Okay. I sort of like I'm very I'm a competitive person, but very much within myself. But then you've allowed an external variable for you to be disappointed. Sure. If you're competitive with yourself, you can't let the judge and jury be right. something you don't respect. Right. You got You got to keep up some boundaries. I think so. Right. No, I think I think that's absolutely right. But then I think what does come out. So when you said to me before, rewinding a little bit, you know, was that a blessing? So in many ways it is because it becomes very liberating, right? 100%. And now you're able to really go for it and go all in. And I've always had these little side hustles on the side. So now it's like, all right, I am going to write that book. Facebook, put in your phone numbers. We're about to go through rapid fire on the phone. But as you can see, I'm captivated by Wendy and I want to ask her something else. It's funny that you said that because that's why I always talk about the last scene of 8 Mile. Mm-hmm. I'm all about liberation. Mm-hmm. Like own your own shit. Like own all your shortcomings. I love right. talking about D's and yeah. F's. I love talking about peeing my bed until I was 12. Right. I love talking about passing on Uber twice. I love talking about missing yeah. it on Yo Bongo. I love talking about all my losses because if I talk yeah. about my losses before you talk about my losses, what's up? Right. It to- you got right. nothing it left. It takes the sting out, right? And more importantly, yeah. like if my friends judge me that I got fired, I'd be like, you suck too at things. <laughs> like, like this <laughs> notion, like I don't put anybody else on a pedestal. Right. So that so there's another gender difference. So Please. right, women are raised to be perfect. Yes. Right. Where the boy, I mean, there's so many studies. This is not my personal opinion, although I do. This is agree the collective. This. Like this is the collective. This is, of course, of, there's a million women that weren't. Yes, but you're, the, right. You're saying as a general as a statement, general statement that girls are raised to be do you perfect feel that, and do you polite. Feel like, do you feel like they're raised to be perfect and polite now? Like right now. 2018, so now, what do you think is happening? I think that's a great question. And yeah. I think we are in the midst of a huge cultural shift. And yes. there's like an imperative to raise really strong, bold, courageous girls in a, in a different way than we've ever seen before. What do you think? What about protecting our kids from failure? Why is this? Why did this happen? Yeah. Did you do what that? a terrible thing. Oh, I hope not. I think that, you know, I think that's where the greatest growth is going to occur. Like you have to Why get Why did that happen from your perspective? Because I have an eight and five year old. You have what? 16 and 14. So you're a little bit ahead. Yeah. Like, to me, what's that? About the protection? Yeah. About, you, like, the bubble, racket, like, bubble yes. wrapping our kids? That's why they're all going to lose. Yeah. Like, really lose. I think, I don't know. I think it came out of this other experience that we want to have perfection with our children, too. We need to make sure they go to the best schools. Right. It was our insecurities. It's our insecurities. You know what's funny you said that? When my, daughter, my kids went to school for the first time and I started meeting people that were sending their kids to private schools, right. I had the craziest epiphany of my life because I didn't grow up in environments that had wealth and private schools and da 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 da. Right. I didn't realize the people had their self esteem wrapped up in their oh, kids' absolutely. accomplishment. That is some fucked up shit, Wendy. Not just schools, sports. Everything. The sports right. are a very these, big deal. Yes, all these Huge. people think their kids are going to the league. That's Dickheads, right. your kid's not <laughs> LeBron. Right. It's not happening. Like, I don't care how much right. gear you buy them. Right. Your kids suck. Right. He sucks. <laughs> Your kids suck at sports. Right? When, like, all these people, like, I see it already. I'm like, Fantastic. that kid? Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I know. the four foot illusions. three kid? Delusions, you think right? he's competing with the kids that are, are growing right. up in the streets? Yeah. You are fucking out of your mind. Yeah. Your kids are soft. Parents are deluded. And then they create these terrible situations where their kids aren't going to be able to fail and they're not going to be able to succeed on their own. And these kids know. Your kid knows when he sucks shit at soccer. Right, right. Your kid knows he's not fucking messy. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I don't mean (laughs) for everybody who's not following along, not messy in the room. Right, on the soccer field. Like messy, M-E-S-S-I, the player. Yeah. He's not fucking messy. right. Anyway, let's do a call because I'm getting a little bit angry. Like, okay. <laughs> I, I'm really struggling but this is the, with deal. what parents. This is right. the deal. Yeah, parents are fucking up kids out of a selfish behavior. Absolutely, it's pissing me Absolutely. off. Now their egos. Really I'm tied mad. To it. Mm-hmm. I want to punch parents in the face. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> Who is I'm this? Here. Peter from Atlanta. When did the book come out? February. Was it a fun experience? It's been great. We're going to get into it's that. It's been a minute. fun ride. Peter, you're about Peter. to blow this, Peter from Atlanta. <laughs> Where is Peter from Atlanta? He's a parent that I want to punch in the face. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mailbox is full. Sorry. Devastating. We're going to move on. Sorry, Let's Peter. go. So it came out February yeah. what? February 7th. And was it um, first 2017. One? This is my second book, actually. Okay. I wrote Tell a me book, about the first one. I wrote a book 10 years before when yes. I first had my first child, yes. all about work-life balance, called How She Really Does It, because I was really struggling with that whole work-life thing. Um, but yeah, this book came out in February. Amacom? Amacom, yeah. Is see, that, who, is, it's that? a the Ameri- 
and what is it? American cool. Management Association. They're a business organization. They do a lot of business books. I love the cover. Who Thank did the you. cover? Thank you. Well, someone they Somebody hired, on their some team. freelancer they hired. Um, yeah, no, it's been great. It's what been was a great the best, ride. What was the best part of the book experience? This one. You know, did you do a tour? At I've all? done a tour. I've d- I'm doing a TED Talk next month. What was the month. biggest bump for the book? Um, this show. The, um, absolutely. But, but clearly, at it's the time. Be this show. Um, you know, it's funny enough, the, I've done a lot of national TV and radio shows, but I feel like it's these strange podcasts. Go that figure. Just really, really no. niche, right? Go w- weird. Weird, weird ones. Yeah. No, but you know what? They move the needle. No right. shit. They really Because people do. pay attention to podcasts Those and people, they don't watch yes. national TV as change. much as people think. Go figure. Who? Brian? All right. B. B. Not R. B. Not Ryan. Brian. Hello? Brian, this is Gary Vee on your Ask Gary Vee show with Wendy Sachs. Hey, Brian. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> yes, sir. How are, oh how are you? Uh, Gary, I'm doing good. Gary, how are you doing? I'm super well. What's your question? All right, listen, man. So uh, I'm a freshman here at uh, UC Irvine. Uh, it's a uh, uh, university in California. I'm a familiar. Uh, I actually, I actually had uh, two questions for you. One of them is more personal. One of them is just kind of broad. Okay. Um, I remember you saying uh, that you really, really like to lose in an interview with, uh, I believe it was Eric Thomas or something okay. like that. Uh-huh. That is um, true. And so that made me think. So then, what does it mean to you to win? Like, like, how do you feel when you win? Like, do you even care about winning at all? I don't like winning that much. The, oh, and, and I'll tell you how I figured that out later in my life. The day after the New York Rangers and Yankees won a championship for me in 1994 and 96, I stopped caring so much so that I didn't even go to the parades. Interesting. And I'm okay. obsessed with the Jets and the Knicks because they haven't won for me. I love the chase. It is anticlimactic to me when I achieve mm-hmm. the goal. Mm-hmm. I love the process. And to me, that is purebred entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is not that you wanna win, take the money and buy a plane and then relax. It's that you're so obsessed with the game, brother. I love losing, that's exactly right. I love the climb, I love the process, I love the purity of it, not the things that come out of it. And that's how I figured myself out by living a little longer and then looking back and be like, wait a minute, that's why I stopped caring about those sports teams. That's fascinating. Yeah. Interesting, right? Yeah, really interesting. The process. It's the journey. It's, it's the, the journey. journey of it all. Okay. Okay. And you get complacent when things 100%. Are, are too good. That's number one. Two? Oh, uh, number two. Question number two. So pretty much this one's more personal. Um, so I haven't really, so I, I wanted to know your take on really like adversity, like how that plays in success. Because really, you know, uh, I really haven't had a lot of adversity, which, you know, I'm grateful for um, but, you know, I just feel like, you know, my, my dad was born in El Salvador. He came here as an immigrant. Mm-hmm. You know, he did the whole, you know, uh, college thing. And he, he's very, a lot more successful than his parents. My mom was born in, you know, the ghetto of L.A. And, you know, she went through all that. And, you know, I was, I've been really comfortable and pretty mm-hmm. average. And I, for some reason, you know, I don't really like being that. You know, mm-hmm. I really haven't had much adversity. So I just want to know, like, what you think about, you know, adversity in your question. success. So first of all, the self-awareness mm-hmm. and humility that is pouring out of your face right now mm-hmm. is so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Brian, like, like Brian, I'm so blown away by this vibe that you're throwing mm-hmm. at. It's a, it, it capsulizes everything I'm trying to achieve with my life right now. So first of all, I just wanna thank you and I want you to know wow. that it's stunning to me how much, in my gut, actually in the pit of my stomach right now, how much I think you'll be successful at this young of an age to deploy this kind of self-awareness absolutely. and humility yeah. is, is stunning, Wendy. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, you know, it's, it's interesting. I do think that a lot of people, you'll hear people's drive comes out of adversity, right? Their personal experience, humiliation, sure. right? So it's like they, their spirit is almost like they're competitive, they need to win, although we know from Gary now that winning isn't everything, but they, it inspires them. There's something that's lighting the fire under them. That's but really I, cool. I, I will absolutely second what Gary just said, that being so self-aware at such a young age is really, it's your own sort of strength Brian, and you're gonna Brian, use you that. You're, you're pretty average. If, if you're you know, on this self-awareness kick, what are you good at? Like what is your best thing you think? You know, I really, really like to, to public speak um, I just really enjoy talking in front of large amounts of people for some reason. Smaller amounts of people, I kind of get nervous. But oddly enough, I just like to speak in front of large amounts of people. Um, you know, I want to be a lawyer when I grow up, or at least that's the goal. 
uh, I just, you know, in all honesty, I just want to tell my parents that I, I don't know if I really want to be a lawyer yet, um, but I just really enjoy public speaking. And Hey, and, hey Bri, and, hey, Bri yeah. what, what are you doing for an internship this summer? This summer? Yes, this uh, summer. Uh, I mean, I just got an internship here at, at UCI with the yearbook program. I'm like their marketing intern or whatever. Do you want to uh, so like do you want to decline it and fly out to New York and spend the summer and be an intern on my team? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <I would. laughs> okay, so uh, yeah. <laughs> if, if you can figure that out, send me an email to Gary at VaynerMedia.com. I'm offering you an internship. Oh my, wow. Gary, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I, I, will, I will send you an email for sure. Cool, brother. Thank you. Take care. I love that kid. Let's do you next were like Santa Claus. Look at this. You know what's funny? Like I've never done that. We've done 260. Oh, we've only done like 50 or something. Yeah. Colin shows them 30. But nonetheless, um, that kid is interesting to me. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like self awareness and humility are the mm -hmm. superpowers of this, and gratitude. Self awareness, humility, and gratitude are literally the superpowers of the next generation. Mm -hmm. And That's traits that are not male by a lot of people's yes. perspective yes. that I basically am only sitting at the place that I am because of those things. This is gonna be your next book. So, yeah, I mean, look, empathy, self-awareness, yep. gratitude, yep. this yeah. is everything that I think about on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. What else, Before we get to the next call, sure. who's gonna be the next call? Lydia from California. Lydia? Lydia. Lydia. Let's, do four more seconds on the book. What, what We haven't gotten in there enough. What, uh, what for the three or four female professionals, but males, if they were right. like, what, what's really the, been the takeaways? What have been, what are the Amazon I feedbacks? Think, what are the emails yeah. you've gotten? What, what's the vibe you've gotten? So people are really intrigued, and I know you speak about this too, but about serendipity. And I could talk about engineering serendipity, right? We can create that magic. So many of us think of serendipity as just a happy accident. Right, right? when you're like, oh my God, I, felt, I, I met my most famous artist, it's serendipity. No, you went to Coachella. Right, or, or you know, you look at other people. What I see is almost people looking at other people saying, oh, you know, she's so lucky. You know, <laughs> those things, well, how did that happen? She's just so lucky. Always good things happen. Fuck lucky You talk. don't, yeah, so you. I hate that talk. I, of and, course there's shit people, that happens. But, but you've if, created it, right? You put it and into maybe, motion. Like, and maybe not. But if you spend one second judging somebody else's luck, yeah. you've already lost the whole fucking game. Agreed. Agreed. Maybe. maybe yeah. Listen, I got yeah. lucky. Russia and America and Israel teamed up and made a trade that Russian Jews so, were able to leave Russia and come to America. I call that luck. I had nothing to do with that. And then otherwise I would have been born in Russia and right. I, excuse me, I was in the Soviet Union, excuse me, and would have been raised there. I'd call that luck. The problem is I don't look at people and say, you were born so attractive, Seth. You know, like 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 I don't think about people that like mm -hmm. my kids, I don't look at them and be like, you were born so lucky because mm -hmm. you were born into a lot of wealth, because mm -hmm. I also know that could be a negative. Like, like spending one second on judging somebody else's luck mm -hmm. is the tell of the biggest losers it's terrible. in the game. But you could set everything into motion for yourself. I mean, I think that's really empowering to know that you can create your good fortune, right? You, you can set things up. You create your visibility. You go to things. You go to networking events. You, you, you let people know and what listen, you're looking for. Listen, you can create. And Wendy, I'll play create. devil's advocate. Yeah. That's easy for you, Wendy. Uh, my parents were drug addicts. I, my, my, my husband left me four months in after we had twins. I'm working two jobs and have kids. I'm not going to networking events. I work two jobs. Right. Like, like. To me, that's still the question is, if anybody in that situation has ever achieved, mm -hmm. then you've got to think about that. Yeah. Like to me, like what, what are the options? Can, you, can your second job at night at retail, go get a retail job and then work on your phone and build an Instagram account that gets you sponsored? Like there's always, there's always something there's to something. do. Yeah. And the internet's democratized everything, right? No, no, so that's it's made the everything By the way, yeah. 1984, yeah. I'm like, mm, you're kind of right. Yeah, right. This. It's transformed this, everything. Right. Well, it's created this. opportunities for people who <sighs> didn't necessarily have opportunities. Or the education. Percent. Or the access. Or and the, by the money. Way, and by the way, doesn't mean things are fair because they're no, not. They're not fair. It's just holy shit. Let's have gratitude for the fact that we've yeah. had something that might be able to do something about it. Right. Let's go to it. Who? Lydia from California. Lydia. Hello? Lydia, it's Gary Vaynerchuk and you're in the Ask Gary V show with Wendy Sachs. Oh my god. <laughs> are you cry are you crying? <laughs> Hello? Lydia, it's, it's Gary V, and you're on the Ask Gary V Show. Oh my God, this is awesome. 
How are you? I'm great. How are you? I was just pulling the tooth out. So I stopped it in the middle of it what? and came to answer this call. Hold you're, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, you're, Lydia. You're, you re- hold on. Someone else's you're tooth. pulling your own tooth out of your mouth right now? No, no, no. I'm, I'm pulling the patient's tooth, but I, I paused. The what? Oh, a patient's tooth. Okay, wait. Patient. Them, hold on, Lydia. I told them if it's, if it's a New York number to, to, to just let me answer the phone. I usually oh don't God. do this. Patients I, come first, except when it's Gary V. Uh, this is, by the way, was the last episode somebody in the dentist chairs? There's something that the universe is telling me about dentists. I better go, you know, Tyler, can you Fantastic. please book me a dentist appointment? I'm being dead serious. I need to go to the dentist immediately. Uh, the universe is speaking. It's, it's talking to you. I'm about to get a root canal, I think, or something. Please help me. No way. This is so exciting, you guys. Okay, oh good. God. What's your question? Okay, so it's me and my two brothers. We opened a boutique little dental office in the heart of Beverly Hills and uh, we're working really hard we're, we'll, we're building a word of mouth type of brand doing lots of social media we follow you like we, we follow you religiously we love you my brother Rashad Brody and I and we were listening about podcasting now so we're creating a blog a blog and we're about to launch a podcast but I don't know where to launch it should it be on my website should it be on iTunes, like how do you get the word out about about the podcast? So the word out and where it lives are two different things, right? And you talked uh-huh. about both different things in there. And remember how I always talk about, you know, watch what I'm doing, not what I'm saying? Uh-huh. If you go to GaryVanderschuk.com and hit the menu bar or if you're on desktop at the top, you'll see podcast, you'll click it, you'll see I describe it, and then I have a link out to all the places you can download my podcast, whether you want to listen on iTunes or Google Play or Spotify or SoundCloud, you should follow that exact thing. And then as following me as religiously as you do, you might have saw earlier today, I posted a little video clip that has a sound clip from my podcast and I said, my podcast is linked in my Instagram. And so sometimes I'm pushing my Snapchat, sometimes I'm pushing my sneaker, sometimes I'm talking about my podcast, but that, that's how you do it. You follow what I'm doing, it's right in your face. Okay, all right. Does that make sense? I just wasn't sure. Yeah, no, that, 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 totally, that totally makes sense. And Seth, uh, is there there's software out there that allows you to upload the audio one time and kick to all the places, or do you have to do it one by one? How do you do it? One kicks to all. And what's that called? Libsyn. Lip, Libsyn. Libsyn, but Anchor will let you kick it out. Oh, that's right, yeah. Anchor does now. And does Anchor let you put a 44-minute podcast up and kick out? All right, go check out Anchor, okay? Anchor, anchor.com? Uh, probably not, but like just search Amp- Anchor voice app on Google and I'm sure you'll find it. And then, and then Google how to use Anchor as my podcast infrastructure. Enter, you will get the answer. Yeah. Okay, and Gary V, okay, listen. Thank you so much, you're amazing. My brother wants to ask you a question. I gotta get back to my extraction. Understood. <laughs> Hello? Hi Gary, man, we love you here. We follow you, you inspire us. You are, uh, you are a prophet of some sort. Thank you for everything you do. So um, me, my sister, and my brother, we're all dentists. We're out in Beverly Hills. And we've been hitting social media very hard. We create a lot of our own content. But I feel lost at times. Uh, we're not getting the traction that we'd like to get. People watch our videos. They're like, these guys have heart, so they come to us. But as far as getting big traction and big presence, we haven't been able to crack it yet. How long and, have you been uh, doing it? Uh, we've been doing it for a couple years, and I've been producing and filming, and I hire videographers. I sit and I, and you know it was they yeah, edit it. And, I understand. Yeah, Wendy, when you when you were going to launch this book in February, I'm sure you started revving up your personal brand content, things of that nature, right. probably six months before. I don't know. I'm asking. Sure. Yeah. You know, I have a good sense of where you're sitting at this game right now. Like, I'm sure you still are like, holy cap! I have so much more upside of people knowing who I am. Right. How do you deal with the fact that you've been grinding, you have talent, this and that, and you don't have millions of it fans? It takes a long time. I'm telling you, I feel like it just takes a long time. It's a little bit of patience and a lot of perseverance and just, you keep feeding the beast is how I feel. Like you keep putting it out there, you keep letting people know that you are that you exist, 
that what you're doing is great and you just keep pushing it. You just keep creating. My friend, I really gotta tell you, like I couldn't agree with that more other than it's a lot of patience and a lot of perseverance. <laughs> it's just a lot of everything, yeah. man. Like you're only two years into the game. Like the first three, four, five, six years, I had very little traction, very, very little traction. And let's call a spade a spade. I would argue that my world has taken its big turn probably starting in January of this last year. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, three, four years ago, especially when I was head down building Vayner, I'd been really quite quiet. So I think it's just mediums. You're about to launch a podcast. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's AR. Maybe it's, maybe it's uh, I, you know, uh, iOS stickers. Mm -hmm. It's just, just hacking, hacking, hacking. Mm -hmm. And then you might have a breakthrough. Uh, it's just as simple as that, man. It's, it's, it's not caring for it to blow up. That moment's never gonna happen. Right. You gotta just decide it's, it's never happen. gonna happen. It's just gradual, gradual, right. gradual. There's never gonna be that viral video. You're just gonna wake up one day mm -hmm. and it's gonna be meaningful. Got it? Dude, I love that. I'm having an issue finding good people that are for like Facebook ads and yep. uh, dependable people for yep. websites and yep. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I, have you ever posted on your own social where you're promoting the dentistry around getting interns or this service from people? Um, we have about a uh, you know thousand five hundred people who like our page. I don't know if that's a good amount. I will do that though. I'll, I'll, try I'll it. Take just that. try it. Yeah, yeah, and just try it. Like, mm -hmm. like you know, I, I think it comes down to um, you know just trying people, trying people, word of mouth. Uh, what what's uh what's your Instagram handle? Because I'm gonna let you shout it out here and let the Vayner Nation community jump in and try to help you. It's our our dental group. Our, our dental. I'm group. looking at it right now. So, that's cute. Yeah. The Instagram content's good. Are you the one you with the, the are you the, are you the one with the uh, with the mustache that like flips up? <laughs> with the what? Uh, handlebar mustache. Is that is that is that your handlebar mustache? <laughs> my handlebar mustache. We're our dental group, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Gary, I finished my extraction. It went well. Good. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> So our, our Instagram is our dental group. Our dental group, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I look, don't I'm, have a mustache. No, that's not you. Now I know who you are. You've got the five o'clock shadow, but who's this dude that has the mustache? Wait, hold on. You're on our wall right now? Yeah, our dental group. Oh, 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 oh. That is a guy. He has a raw food restaurant in Salt Lake City. His name is Omar. He's an amazing fellow. Yeah, Understood. Omar All right. <laughs> Guys, uh, Vader Nation, R, like the little letter dental group on Instagram. Help these characters out. I like their vibes. Guys, thanks for calling. Have a great day. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Lots of love from Thank Beverly Hills. <laughs> that was fun. When, what do you want to end with? What didn't we not cover in our time together here that you would like uh, people to know about? You know, I think... It's really just all about taking some action. And I feel like you talk about this a lot too, but it's really, you know, to what I see are people just getting stuck and they get stuck because they're afraid and they're afraid to be judged. And again, women are a little bit different than the guys. And 99% of guys are afraid to be judged. People are afraid. Uh, but so many women, afraid. they're afraid that they're going to be called, Force. you know, like, who, Ugly, are you, who are you to try bitch, this? Right? All that stuff. Right. Cliche shit. I mean, garbage from weak other people. It's really, it's really fascinating. I, I didn't call myself a writer for a really long time because I'd been a TV producer and I wasn't even really writing there. So even to make that leap to say I'm a writer is because I started blogging and getting published and more pub and finally it took me a couple of years before I said I guess I'm a writer when how long have you been trying to be on this show for in your opinion since last last January right I mean I was yeah so like that's the hitting you up over me. and over like yeah. never felt annoying super thank patient thank you thank you you're the disproportionate least famous person that's been on the show <laughs> the last 10 and probably the next 10 I feel so honored no listen let's talk about <laughs> yeah, this no it's, it's true important. it's true yeah it's important I'm just the I'm, fact that yeah. you're talking about this as yeah. a woman right and the fact that the person that's going to mm -hmm. be in in this 20 show window mm -hmm. the least famous mm -hmm. through perseverance right through confidence yeah through great tact yeah you know thank you like seriously I appreciate really that people hit me up all of a them. lot, a lot, <laughs> and and the your cadence and your and your grace has you sitting in the seat, and and in a weird way, I think it's just one meta example of probably what you're trying to be to teach and talk about. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. When you get to ask the question of the day, okay, anything you want. Oh, on the okay. Ask Gary V Show, the guest. Thanks for watching. Yes, <laughs> uh, gets to ask the question. I didn't question. know that. I'm prepared. Okay, okay, I'm okay prepared. good. You're prepared. prepared. Respect. Good. Yeah, I misread it. Go ahead. What's yeah. your question of the day? 
to you, and I'm asking you, like, what? Nope. Oh, I'm not. No. Sorry. You lost, I'm, oh, you I'm, lost all your points there. You're going to get flamed for that. Everything, you were really on a roll. Into I was that. on a roll. Anyway, you get to ask them the question today. Hundreds, if not thousands of answers across YouTube and Facebook. What is your question today to the masses? All right. So is VR really going to take off? Is that really sort of the next the next wave? Because I don't know about it yet. And so I need to figure out my next pivot so I can get into VR if that's really going to be the next trend. I love it. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. You keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them.